Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Now this will be available on YouTube as a video as well as on my podcasts, um, the podcast Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress podcast. Now, there's always a chance of background sound, my arms touching the chair, or there might be a train, <laughs> or there might be Andre the ferret running around. So, it's not necessarily going to be completely silent, but that's okay because it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be silent. The fact is, where are you going to find complete silence, really? I mean, even if you put earplugs in your ears, where else? But even if with earplugs. You can still kind of hear some sounds, whether it be your own heartbeat or your breathing. You can hear stuff. And this is stuff going on outside, background noises. You may not hear it, but you may hear like a muffle, a little, a little muffle of something. Now that's okay. Because relaxing doesn't need silence. Like I think right now there's someone in the garden. with a dog which means you can hear a little bit of clapping that's a clever person doing that at 4.30 in the morning very bright <laughs> but I'm not going to shout out the window I'm not So I think part for me is why I'm talking about this background sound is because when I was younger, I used to get really, really annoyed by it. If I was trying to relax, if I was trying to sleep, I used to really find excessive noise very difficult to deal with. Maybe I was hypersensitive to sound. There's a possibility of that. But at the same time, I'm not really sure. I've, it's almost like as part of my brain really believed that in order for me to relax, I needed complete silence. In order for me to sleep, I needed complete silence. Unrealistic. Extremely unrealistic because it's really completely silent. Even if you're sitting on the top of a mountain as far away from human beings, traffic, all that stuff, you're still going to hear birds farting. You know, you're still going to have planes going over, probably. You still have the wind. You still have. You still have the sound of your own breathing. You know, there's always going to be sounds. And I think as I've got older and my hearing, I've got a bit of hearing loss. And there was times when I would wish, I used to think, I wish I was, I wish I was deaf so I didn't have to 
hear that stuff, which is a stupid thing to wish for. Um, I didn't really mean it at the time, but you know, I'd be laying in bed and I'd be getting so frustrated. So frustration to outside noise or distractions maybe, if you want to call them that. I think that was worse than the actual, my reaction to it was worse than the noise itself. Now, admittedly, sometimes there's a degree of noise that's just kind of unacceptable. But I used to get upset over the tiniest thing. And I've learned that actually relaxing is fairly easy, regardless of what's going on outside. One of the things that helped me with this was ways to go to the Buddhist center. Uh, when I first started going to the Buddhist Centre in 2000 and November 2002 and I learnt to meditate and I'd be there on a Wednesday night and it's, it was in a town centre it was like the second floor up and every time I meditated in the shrine room there'd be loads of people outside shouting and laughing and screaming and playing around and some of them, I guess, were drunk. Um, and I learned that actually sound is, that stuff is separate from me. It's separate from you. It's not, I guess the vibrations connect. There's a vibration, the sound vibration. And sometimes the sound vibration can be a lot worse than the actual sound. For example, if someone's playing bass music and it's the bass shaking the whole building, you can't even necessarily hear the sound, but you can feel it. That's not particularly pleasant, I don't think, for someone who shares a house with someone doing that. But we can't put everyone in prison. So... Being able to just separate yourself from the sound can be useful. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I've learned to do it. It took me a while, it did, to be fair. I used to be ridiculously reactive to sound. If I was in bed, going back when I was a teenager, 20s, I used to punch walls, I used to scream, have tantrums, everything. If there was noisy neighbours, if there was noise going on. Um, very childish reaction from me at the time. And because I've lived in many, many different shared habitizations, if that's the right word, habitats, sharing houses with other people that are generally inconsiderate, then I managed gradually to learn that actually there are some practical things you can do. Like I counselled someone years ago and this was an elderly gentleman probably in his 70s and he said that he lived opposite a park and the last few months lots of young youngsters probably late teens whatever were gathering in the park at night screaming shouting fighting and all that stuff playing loud music and he wasn't able to sleep and he he put his house on sale he was literally he was that upset and he wanted to move, but he wanted to do something much worse than that. He didn't think he could take it anymore. He was actually considering ending his life because it got to him so much. Now, 
I said something to him and he couldn't believe it even not even thought about it not even considered it about doing something practically in the short term I don't mean you know get a gun and start snipering them what I mean is I said have you considered getting some earplugs short term this isn't a solution long term solution but short term and he said no didn't even consider it now at that time I was wearing earplugs every night because if you lose someone it's very very noisy then you can lay in bed all night being miserable getting angry or you can do something about it practically so I chose to do that unfortunately I kind of wanted to wean myself off the earplugs because I've worn them for years not the same ones but one day I pulled an earplug out and it pulled half my well basically I um, I had a perforated eardrum because I'd put the earplug in too too far into my ear so I was uh, a bit unwell for a couple of weeks so I I realised then that if you do wear earplugs be careful it's very easy to sort of push them too far in sometimes especially if you've got an itchy ear like use it to scratch your ear as well but perforated eardrum is not good because it just leaves you dizzy and it's weird and very strange like being drunk but without the I guess without the expense or the fun so I learned to separate the sound because it's a separate thing it's not part of me the background sound is separate to the point where I can sleep while the lawn is being mown moaned mowed outside as opposed to in the bedroom so I can sleep through that it might wake me up initially it might like oh and I'm like okay and what I noticed is I noticed this a, a while back is you may not realise this but when you close your eyes after a while your ears just seem to turn off now I didn't know it happened I didn't know this happened your ears switch off so when you're in that mode whether it's relaxing or whether it's sleeping whether it's listening to someone like me waffling on and on and on and you've got your eyes closed and even though technically it might seem as if I'm just talking about stuff and what's it keep going on about earplugs for well it comes a point where you drift whether it's relaxing or whether it's sleeping and when you drift you know you've very much gone internal you've gone very very deep inside yourself quite quickly as well so the stuff that's going on outside is no longer relevant it might not have been relevant to start with but it becomes less relevant and the more often that the outside sounds become less important to you the easier you can manage to get into that state of mind where you kind of don't care about it it's I suppose it's quite a strange thing but there's a lot to be said for not caring about something because there's lots of things to care about lots of maybe people in your life that you 
deeply care about, you love, you cherish them and all that stuff. And that's great. But it's quite good if you can also have things you really don't care about. That you could not care, could not give, as uh, the term says, I could not give a monkeys, do not care about that particular thing. I would suggest that we all have maybe at least one person in our life that perhaps they're in our life, but we wish they weren't. They're a friend of a friend, maybe. And they're the most annoying person that you could ever meet and you wish they weren't there. But unfortunately, your friend, for some reason, seems to like them. Yeah, we've all kind of got that, I suppose, or had that in the past. Could be a family member, you know, who knows? So, when you care about what that person thinks... When you care about what that person does, when you care about what that person says, that can cause a lot of hardship, emotional pain, stress, anxiety. When you don't care about that person, the problematic person, when you could not care one bit about what they think, what they say, what their opinions are, what they think about you, when they almost in your mind, they're just there. They're not relevant to you or your life. It makes it easier. How can someone that doesn't, kind of doesn't really exist, upset you? And that might sound harsh. You might say, well, it's a human being and... I don't want to feel that way about human beings, but you're not feeling that way. You're not feeling anything. I think, you know, it's, it's more positive to have zero feelings towards somebody than to have anger and resentment. Because that, that doesn't get you anywhere. And I've tried. I've gone down the anger route. I've really given it a good old go, but... It don't get didn't get me anywhere. Didn't get me anywhere. Didn't get me anywhere. I learned to talk one day. It's not going to get you anywhere either. Anger, hatred, resentment. Nah, pointless. Absolutely pointless. Don't take it from me. Yeah, take it from me. Save yourself some time. Let that let that crap go. Absolutely pointless. Being angry with someone. And that is... It is a poison, really. I know, it's, that's what some religions say and philosophy and, you know, I'm hardly saying anything original here. Apart from maybe presenting it in my own way in their own manner so in that that thing that causes you stress that thing <laughs> I'm not saying a human being is a thing but that person can become a thing that person that maybe causes you stress or anxiety, or used to cause you stress and you know anxiety and tension and all kinds of emotional pain maybe in the past. They then be they they've almost just become like a chair or a carpet or a bit of toilet paper, you know. That's harsh, isn't it? I like it though. Yeah, like a bit of toilet paper. There's the old joke though, isn't there? Yeah, but a bit of toilet paper, that's useful. <laughs> so, 
they're no longer part of your life they're not useful to you you're not useful to them you know you just move on and try not to let them or don't allow them to get to you because if you don't care about the person you don't care about what they think then they can't hurt you even though they're not hurting you you're the one that's allowing yourself to experience that emotional discomfort by what they're saying or their behavior so that is a bitter pill to take though it's difficult I know it's so annoying when you hear that when someone says to you No, they're not making you feel angry. You're the one allowing yourself to feel angry because nobody can make you feel anything. Hmm. Also, you've never heard about torture, have you? But it's a different thing. It's in a normal situation. Another human being doesn't have the power over you. Just like the sounds in, you know, the traffic in the background when you're relaxing or trying to sleep. They don't have power over you. You're really going to allow someone who's bibbing their horn because they're too lazy to get their fat ass out of the car to actually knock on the door of the person they're picking up or visiting. If anything, feel sorry for them for being so lazy, for being so inconsiderate. Inconsiderate people are something to feel sorry for. Imagine having such such a kind of missing part of your brain where you can't even consider that what you're doing, you're not aware of your own actions, and you know if people who slam doors let doors slam you're not even able to have the brain power to turn a door handle you know in you know like shared accommodation i've lived in places people let's let doors slam you know, all hours of the morning day night whatever imagine you gotta feel sorry for people like that they don't have the ability to turn a door handle they don't understand the concept that's got to be difficult for those people. Now, how do they get through life? How do they manage to? How do they even manage to know how to feed themselves? If they can't even close a door quietly. See, I like to think of things like that. It takes away the anger. It takes away the hostility or the resentment or whatever. Because I start feeling sorry for them, and I start just seeing maybe the funny side to it I'm thinking like how do they manage to clean their teeth they can't even turn a door handle how do they clean their teeth like they're waving it in the air toothpaste just going everywhere I don't know what to do with this thing maybe so people have jobs where they have to you know they kind of almost have to turn off that part of the brain which has consideration like lorry drivers van drivers people taxi drivers where they're just holding the traffic up a lorry driver is delivering they have to park and deliver they're holding the traffic up for like 10 minutes it's not their fault, it's their job. It's not their fault that we live in a, especially in England, I mean, the roads are tiny. It's not built for traffic. Seriously, the roads in this country, yeah, it, it literally, I think, like tiny miniature, what's those little cars, you know, the miniature ones, just one person sits in and you're like that. You could do that, going either either way. The roads are just too small. We must have been tiny in the old days. Honestly, we must have been like three foot tall. 
The roads are silly. Those Romans got a lot to answer for. And they were my ancestors, but hey, what can I say? What can I do? What can I say? And annoying. So those people who do those kinds of jobs have to find a way to turn off that part of their brain which has consideration on that angle. However, what I find, being a pedestrian, if I'm waiting to cross the road, it's more likely that a lorry driver will stop to let me cross than a, than a just person in the car. So lorry drivers are also very considerate at the same time. So I'm not having a go at lorry drivers. I'm just saying sometimes we have to turn that off. People who pick up the trash, the rubbish, um, the dustmen and women. They're doing that job early in the morning. The big old truck making lots of noise. I mean, I think it's part of their job that they have to talk really loudly, shout at each other, whistle, laugh loudly, sing, and moan about how smelly the rubbish is. I think that's part of their job. I think this must be in their contract. So they have to turn off that consideration part of their brain doing that job. So... I think it shows that we can turn off parts of our brain that are being active, such as being reactive, reacting to sounds, reacting to those people, picking up the rubbish, shouting and banging and moaning and, oh, this is a heavy bag and it's smelly. Yeah, because it's full of rubbish and it's been there for two weeks. What did you expect? Angel farts? You know, so... It used to bother me. Now, I kind of feel sorry for them. In a sense. I've done that job. I know it's a horrible job. It's dirty. It's very, very physically demanding. And getting up that early in the morning, oh, wow. No thanks. But... You have to turn off consideration, certain parts. So we're always changing. We're always sort of manipulating our own brains in a way. We turn that stuff off. Like people, I remember when I used to do cleaning. I've had a few cleaning jobs over the years. And there was a time I worked in a nightclub cleaning up toilets. Now a nightclub toilet, after a Friday night, Go in there the next day. It's disgusting. Especially the men's. But even the women's aren't that great to be fair. I don't think any toilets are that great. I'm not really a fan of toilets. Although they are handy. I had to change my mindset. To not be grossed out. Because you can't do a job if you're completely grossed out and gagging. Like, that's disgusting. What is that? That didn't come out of a human body, surely. But eventually, I just realised it was my reflection in the water. <gasps> eventually, I had to turn my brain off. That part of my brain that was reactive to bad smells and things that looked horrible. And to the point where I didn't, but I could, have eaten a sandwich whilst doing that job I didn't obviously because that is disgusting um, but I wasn't affected by the smell or by anything anymore and you could say well you got used to it I don't know how used to it I actually got it didn't bother me anymore because I didn't allow it to bother me anymore because I had to get on with it in the same way as when I worked in a chip shop or worked in a bakery doing 16 hour shifts in extreme heat and very dangerous environment and everything was hot you know completely getting burnt continuously it wasn't even getting used to it it was about turning off the part of my brain 
which didn't want me to do that. The part of my brain that wanted to leave and go out and just not come back. I had to turn that part off. So, what I find is we can, all of us, turn off parts of our brain and turn on parts of our brain. In fact, we can affect our brains by our thoughts. So relaxing. You can, I can, we can, decide to turn off the parts of your brain that is feeling stressed or that creates stress or anxiety. You can turn it off. Just say, you know what? No thanks. I'm going to relax now. You can close your eyes. You can notice how you feel. And if you've got a part of your body that's physically has discomfort, when you focus on that part, the part naturally relaxes and feels more comfortable. And that's without you doing anything. Unless, of course, you focus on that part and thinking to yourselves uh, and being negative. If you do it with negativity, of course, you can make it more painful, more, more, yeah, you know. So if you focus on a part of your body going, oh, this is horrible, this is painful, this is going to be painful forever, this is always painful, yeah, why me, why me, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be uncomfortable and it will get worse, possibly. You could focus on it thinking, we don't have to focus on it to think anything for it to relax. Really. You just need to remove the negativity. You don't have to add anything else because your natural state of your body and your mind is to feel calm and relaxed in a calm and relaxing situation. Now, you know, let's be real. I can be relaxed and calm here while I'm doing this. If someone starts banging on my front door really loudly, banging, bang, bang, I'm not just going to continue and say, oh, I'm relaxed, I can ignore that, that doesn't affect me. I'm not a yogi. Or yoga, no, yogi, yogi bear. I'm not. I'm going to be focusing on that. And that's natural. It's not about relaxing, it's not about being unconscious. Even drifting to sleep is not about being completely unaware of everything. Because if you're asleep, someone bangs on the door, there's a good chance you're going to wake up. And it's natural. And it's healthy. It's, you know, a protective thing that we all have inside us. Which is a good thing. I mean, there are parts of our sleep where we're less likely to be disturbed. You know, when we're really deep. that There's a point where we all get to where we're completely gone. But even then, you can still be disturbed by... Something that's unusual. Uh, the other day I was asleep in bed. Andre, my little boy, my ferret, Andre, he was screaming. Not something I hear very often. It scared the heck out of me. I was, suddenly I'm awake. You know what it was? And then I heard him. I recognise the noises he makes. So I come into the living room. And he's stuck. He's got a nail stuck in um, basically a bit of thread. It was stuck around his nail in a bit of his bedding. So um, I kick him. And, no, I didn't. I, so I picked him up and I sorted it out. Got rid of the, cut the thread and gave him a big cuddle and that. And then he went back to sleep. 
So, but that was good. I didn't want to sleep through that. I want to be able to wake up in a situation like that because that's important to me. Plus, I don't want him screaming and disturbing the neighbours. Because I'm considerate. Da, da, da. But at the same time, can't expect other people to be considerate. And some people have probably different ways of being considerate. Because you might have someone that slams doors downstairs, you know, or upstairs from you. You might have someone that bangs around. You might have someone that... Um, turns the bathroom light on every time they go into the bathroom and so just leave it on at night you know turn it on and off on and off which way you know it's very loud echoey most echoiest room in the house great place to go to the toilet especially if you've got a lot of gas brilliant so echoey great acoustics not great for people living upstairs from you or downstairs because they can hear it the whole street can hear it Maybe, I don't know. But there was a point that I was making. That person may be really considerate because perhaps previous to moving there where you are, they may have played really, really loud music. So they may be they may be listening to loud music through headphones. So they are being considerate. You just don't realise it because you're hearing what they're doing. But it is actually, how realistic is it to expect to not hear anything from a neighbour? I don't think it's, it's realistic at all. Even if you're in a different building, unless you're semi-detached or detached. If you're, even if you're in a detached house, you might still hear them if they've got loud music or they've got their car parked outside. And they're getting into their car, slamming it. People like to slam car doors, don't they? So, or playing their music in the car, or if, you know, you're still going to hear stuff. Unless you're deaf. Unless you literally have no hearing or harder hearing. Uh, then, but God, I said it's extreme, an extreme kind of situation, isn't it? I mean, I admittedly, if I had hearing aids, I would have them down low a lot of the time. Well, I'm not lying to you. That's what I would do. Probably, especially if I was around people, so I didn't have to listen to them. So I'd turn it up when I was watching television. And I'd, if people were talking around me, I would turn them down because I don't want to listen to what they're saying. Especially if they're talking, <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> And when I went to bed, I'd have them off at all. I wouldn't leave the hearing aids on when I was asleep. I'd take them off. Probably, I don't know, if they detach, unless, unless it's attached to me brain or something. I don't know much about hearing aids. I've heard good things about them, but I don't know, you know. So... we can turn parts of our brain off and on that part of the brain that's responsible for reacting to a neighbour a noisy neighbour cars, traffic lorries in a distance planes going over you know that kind of stuff when that part of your brain just automatically turns off when you go to bed you lay down in your bed there's no room for that you know everything really is kind of switching off you're almost going into autopilot or kind of like a life preserve um, situation where everything all your vital organs are just doing what they need to do. Nothing more. Just what they need to do. Your heart's pumping at the rate it needs. Which would be a lot slower than it would be if you was walking or running or 
being active, your brain does the same thing. It slows down. So when you're relaxing, your brain slows down. When you're sleeping, your brain slows down. When you listen to me, you may feel that your brain switches off completely, but your brain slows down. Your mind goes from being active to being maybe mildly interested in what I'm saying to start with possibly and then maybe starts to switch off you may start to find yourself drifting but you don't realise that you're drifting until you stop drifting You know, when you kind of come back, like, oh, oh. Like, oh, oh, what's this person talking about? Oh, yeah, that's that bloke. That bloke with a funny face. He's he's still talking. I wonder what he's talking about. This is supposed to be about relaxation. Didn't he say something about not being able to turn door handles and eat sandwiches while cleaning toilets? What on earth is this about? But that drifting process is natural. And as your body feels more relaxed, naturally, feels calmer and looser, the part of your brain that Perhaps, you know, the, the part that maybe worries or is concerned about your well-being stops being concerned. In the same way as if you, I suppose with Andre, my little boy, I, you know, I, I cut the, the piece of um, fabric so that it's no longer caught in his nail. And then I was no longer concerned. Once I saw him, gave him a big hug, lots of kisses for about five minutes and then put him down and he went back to sleep and I wasn't concerned about him anymore. And it's that sync, that almost connection between knowing that you're going to be available if needed. You can relax, but at the same time know that if if you need to be alert and awake for some reason, you will be. And you don't need to have the levels of stress that you used to. It's almost as if something's changed by listening to me, even though in some ways it may just seem like I'm talking absolute crap at times. It's like, what are you on about, Jason? You're just waffling on and you're moving from one thing to another and what have you what's what's your problem with lorry drivers? I don't have a problem with lorry drivers. I love lorry drivers. If it wasn't for lorry drivers, how do we get our stuff? They deliver it. The point was is we change our brain. We change how we think. We access different parts of our brain where automatically it kicks in at different times depending on what we're doing so if for example you're trying to get home from somewhere and you know the trains are delayed you you find your way back to where you want to be 
we always get to the destination that we're aiming at in the end we always get home eventually you know and those, it might not seem like we're going to but we always manage to do it generally but that's not something that you need to think about when you're relaxing that that part of your brain activated at that time See, right now, I'm sitting here, I'm just, I guess, in some ways, shooting the breeze with you. Just chatting. You know, just... That's it. Just chatting about stuff, which is what I do, you know. It's not, um... It's nothing major, just me talking. I do bore myself though, so I do really want to close my eyes, and because I, I feel relaxed. I don't know about you. <laughs> I just feel, I just feel relaxed and calm. And in reality, I probably could fall asleep quite easily right now. I'm not going to, but I could. So I'm trying to keep my eyes open. But it's difficult because I prefer to have my eyes closed. And if I wasn't doing a video, if I, if I was just a podcast, then I wouldn't need to have my eyes open. But I feel like I'm being a little bit rude if I close my eyes whilst um, I'm talking into the camera, you know? You know what I mean? So our brain, your brain, my brain, the parts that are needed at the particular time are activated. And that's the thing. I've come to realise that a very, very useful thing to do is to start to have a bit of faith in your own brain I suppose that's really all I'm trying to say in this recording is that you can relax you can put trust in your own brain to allow you to relax and sleep regardless of what's going on I'm going to go now, so thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.